Now, over the past couple of months, I've hit a ridiculous amount of drivers, to be perfectly honest, and I've got with me a selection of the very, very best. And I'm gonna be naming my overall favorite at the end of the video. Today, I'm here at the beautiful Santo de Serra Golf Club in Madeira, and we are looking at the best drivers of 2024. Okay, let's get started by talking about the looks, and that's crucial because in Driver as any other club, it's really important you like what you're looking down on. And I think 2024 might just go down as a vintage year for driver releases. I'm gonna start with the Callaway AI Smoke. Now I love the look of this driver. It's been a little divisive. I've seen some other reports and reviews and thoughts online. People not quite liking the effect on the bottom. I love it. I think the vibrant kind of smoky effect that's created here really pops from a retail point of view on the shelf. And I love the accent colors they've used in the fonts and the weights here. So what Callaway have done here, they've created a, a more light gray color that blends beautifully into that front piece. And I think the aesthetic overall, all the drivers in this family look absolutely fantastic. Now, similarly with TaylorMade, they've changed tactics as well. So the red face of the Stealth and Stealth 2 is gone. And I think I've said this in one of my other reviews, but it was quite divisive. So there'll be many people jumping for joy that it's gone. And there'll be a few people a bit upset because they really like the red. I'm in the jumping for joy camp. I much prefer this kind of dark navy face. It's, it's a bit subtler and I think it'll appeal to more of the masses and it certainly suits my eye better. Also what you'll notice on the TaylorMade range, the whole family, the QI10 family, They've dropped this sort of banner strip at the front altogether. It's been replaced with an infinity crown. So it's the same sort of black gloss finish all over the head. And I just think it looks really, really clean. One other thing I like about the QI10 range, handy little white strip they've put on the leading edge here at the top. Because the face and the crown are now a little bit more similar than they were, we haven't got the red and the black as, as different as they were before. They've added this little strip to help with alignment to really pick out that face angle. And I think it's really, really good. I've got the LS model in my hand and that's a similar shape to its predecessor. But in the QI10 Standard and the QI10 Max, it's a much more rounded and larger profile. And I actually really, really like that. I really like the new shape they've created there. So great work from TaylorMade too. Another noteworthy mention before I get to my winner, Cobra Dark Speed. Now, there's not much to say about this because there's not actually that much going on, but that's what I like about it. Super minimal. They've gone matte black all over. Looks really slick, looks really sleek. On the other ranges, there's some blue accents, there's some red accents, but we're talking minimal. So it's one of the most minimal and least offensive heads, but looks really sophisticated in that matte black. But for me, my overall winner in terms of looks, it might be a bit of a surprise, the Mizuno STG. I just think Mizuno have got a knack of making some really, really good looking drivers. They've got plenty of tech that you can see on the bottom with the sliding rails here. But they don't overdo it with logos, they don't overdo it with colors. But the standout point for me in the STG that probably won it for me in this category is the profile down behind the ball. It's a little bit more compact, it's got 440cc as opposed to most drivers which are looking at 460. So it's a little bit more of a compact head and it's a bit it's quite deep in terms of its face, which is a look that really appeals to me. On the top, it's all gloss black, but it's got a blend of carbon effect into a more solid color. It's just a really sophisticated, premium looking driver. Mizuno keep knocking them out and I keep liking them. So this is my best looking driver of 2024. So the first one I wanna talk about in terms of feel is the Mizuno STG. Much like its looks, it's got kind of a, a subtle and understated feel and sound to it. It's kind of muted, a bit more of a dull thud. So I'm just gonna hit one away here and hopefully you'll be able to pick up on the camera, on the audio, the noise that it's emitting. It's a nicely struck shot and it just, it's got quite a deep thud to it. And it, like I said, there's a certain sophistication to the strike that I really like about that. And at the other end of that sound and feel spectrum, we've got the Cobra Dark Speed LS. Okay, so onto the Cobra Dark Speed LS. And like I said, this is probably just at the other end of the spectrum. To me in testing, just feels a bit harsher, a bit firmer, and emits a more sort of high pitch, sharper noise. So I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna hit one away and hopefully you'll be able to pick that up on the audio. Again, decent hit there. And I hope you just heard that sort of 
The impact sound just feels a little bit quicker, a little bit, a bit of a sharper, sharper burst, so a higher pitch noise. And that's not good or bad, they'll just be personal preferences at each end of the spectrum. But my favorite feeling and sounding driver of 2024 is the PXG Black Ops. So before I talk about the PXG Black Ops, I just wanted to give an honorable mention to the Titleist TSR3. This is a really solid drive. It's been around a little longer. And again, all round performance great, but from a feel and sound point of view, it's pretty much bob on. But I think this just eclipses it, if I'm totally honest. So PXG, they've done a lot of work on human audio and, and how humans perception of sound. And they've come up with what they call natural frequency optimization. And within this head, there's a lot of tech that's really fine tuning that noise and feel. And again, like the others, I'm just gonna hit one away and hopefully you'll pick it up because for me, what they've achieved here is fantastic. Yeah, great drive as well, but noise wise, I just think it's perfect. You know, again, this will all be subjective in terms of what you like to hear and what you like to feel, but this to me sits beautifully in the middle. It's not too soft and molly coddling my hands at all. It's not too harsh and there's too much feedback. It's just a really good, solid feeling driver, makes a great sound right in that sort of mid pitch and it really suits everything I want. So for me, the best sounding and feeling drive of the 2024 PXG Black Ops. Before we get into that, if you could do us a favor, if you really enjoy this video, if you could hit that like button, it really helps us. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and comment down below what's been your favorite driver of this release season. I'd love to hear it. Okay, so let's talk about distance. And as I mentioned, I've hit an awful lot of drivers over the past few months. So I'm just gonna pop some data up on the screen for you to take a little look at. And again, if you need to pause it to take that in, there is a lot of data and a lot of numbers there. Please do take a look and get back to me. But from a data point of view, as a driver tester, we try and make things as fair and equitable as possible in terms of testing with the same base loft, the same balls, the same launch monitors, and making it as equal as possible. But the nature of club testing and how manufacturers get you samples, there can be some small discrepancies in there. So you do need to take these with a little bit of a pinch of salt, but this is what I experienced from my testing. Now there is one anomaly in 2024 that I need to talk about that's sort of come up through testing and that's around shaft length and it sort of came to my attention through the TaylorMade QI10 Max. So a lot of the drivers that are trying to maximize moment of inertia this year have squashed their heads down a little bit in order to be able to spread weight wide. And what that's done is when they've squashed that head down, hosel has gone down and shaft lengths are coming down with it really in theory unless you address that. So TaylorMade haven't addressed that with the QI10 Max. They've just let that play a quarter of an inch shorter than the rest of their range. And that's, in my testing, I noticed that in terms of ball speed, the shorter length of shaft, I wasn't able to generate as much club head speed and as such that didn't translate into ball speed. But don't let that fool you. The QI10 Max head is a really quick head. It's just I wasn't able to generate as much speed at that length. However, that could be addressed through a custom fitting. And interestingly, other manufacturers have gone the other way. So Mizuno with their ST Max driver, have actually gone longer in length, assuming that if you hit it across the face a little bit more because of that extra length, you're gonna get away with it because of the quality of the head. So they've addressed that in a couple of different ways, which is really interesting. But back to the raw data, and this is just about distance, my longest carry and total numbers both came with the TaylorMade QI10 standard model. And that's interestingly the model that Rory McIlroy's just switched into from the LS model. So that was a really high performer for me in terms of overall distance output. And that is clearly the winner of this category. But before we go, an honorable mention to the Ping G430 Max 10K driver, which was less than a yard behind the TaylorMade QI10 standard model with significantly higher MOI and a lot more stability in the head. So from a driver of that ilk, to produce that level of ball speed was truly impressive. But consistency for me encompasses dispersion, not just from a, a left to right point of view, but also from a front and back point of view. You wanna make sure that all your good strikes with driver are gonna carry that bunker or that ditch or whatever you need to. So consistency is key and I've picked out three drivers that I think really embody that sort of consistency theme. And the first one of which is the TaylorMade QI10 Max. Now this is a big story for TaylorMade this year. This is their hero driver. And how they've created this MOI story is they've essentially squashed down the head 
So it's shallower than it was, but they pushed all that weight backwards into more extreme positions. So to create real stability in that head. And the effect that head has is on these off center hits, there is tremendous consistency. You're losing less ball speed, tighter dispersion down the range from a left to right point of view, but also, as I said, from front to back. So this is one of the most consistent drivers that I've tried this year. Now, next up, the second driver that I've picked out is the Mizuno ST Max. Again, it's a similar principle. They've gone down the same kind of route, squashing that head down, shallowing the face and pushing those weight to extreme locations. Very similar stuff that I saw with the QI10 Max, huge consistency across the face. And that's key in this category, I think. Those across the face hits, none of us are perfect, none of us center it every time, and the ST Max really performs. But for me, in this category, there's only one winner. And that is the Ping G430 Max 10K. I'm telling the same story again here to a certain extent, but that's what's happened. The head's been spread wider, more extreme weight locations, but across the face, I found it so difficult. And I'm not renowned as the world's straightest driver of the golf ball, if I'm brutally honest, but this driver flatters me so, so much, no matter where I hit it on the face. Center strikes are obviously great and they usually feel great throughout these, this equipment, but across the face, the retention of ball speed and the tightness of the dispersion just sets this driver apart. So for me, the Ping G430 Max 10K takes the title of the most consistent driver of 2024. Right, I wanna to talk to you a bit about value and with the economic climate looking a little, shall we say, under the weather, price point is probably a really relevant category to talk about this year. So to start with, I just wanna point out the Ping G430 Max 10K. Now this comes in, this is pretty punchy. This is at 599, so that's about 600 pounds for a driver. Whilst I really like it in huge amount of performance elements, that is quite a punchy number. So a couple more that represent some probably more value here. We've got the Wilson Dynapower Carbon, which is a nice overall performing driver. Good numbers, as you'll have seen from the performance section. And it retails at 429, but you can actually pick it up. It's been out for a little longer than some of these drivers. You can actually pick it up for under 400 pounds, which I think represents really good value. But for me, probably the winner in this category is the Cobra Dark Speed, the family as a whole, really. You can pick them up for 429 at a recommended retail price. And for the performance elements that go into this, the look, very premium look, and the head cover, which is phenomenal, by the way, that is exceptional value. So for me, the most value you can get in a driver in 2024 would be the Dark Speed family from Cobra. So the time to reveal is here, and my favorite driver is the Ping G430 Max 10K. Now, if anyone's seen my review of this driver, that may not have come as a surprise to anyone because I was effusive in my praise. Ping has achieved something here which I didn't even know was possible. The level of stability and forgiveness and playability of this driver on its own is exceptional. But combined with the ball speed, the spin, the lower spin number I was getting from this, I didn't even, as I said, I didn't know this was achievable and it really is truly exceptional. The price is punchy at 599, but to me, this is worth every penny. You're gonna see all of the performance benefits I've just spoken about. It looks great, it feels great, and it's gonna stand the test of time, this one. I think this will go down as an all-time classic and it's my favorite of 2024.